What's up everyone? I am about to take a two hour road trip down south from where I live and uh, hopefully I will be returning home with a van full of Nintendo video game goodness. Uh, about a week or so ago I was contacted by a friend who lives down in that area, about two hours south from where I live, and uh, he said that he's thinking about getting rid of his collection, or at least a really big portion of it, and he collected pretty much nothing but Nintendo from original to Nintendo Switch. And uh, I was like, all right, I'm interested. He's someone that I've known for about, I'd say, seven years or so. Uh, he's been to the flea market. He was in like a really early episode of Video Game Sellers. Uh, he's also come to my house a couple times, and I've like sold uh, some games in my front yard <laughs> to him and, and some of his friends. So uh, I was, I was like, of course I'm interested. We've talked a few times on the phone, and um, it's kind of like a mystery buy because I know like what he has, but I don't really know exactly what I'll be buying or the price I'll be paying yet. Um, we're pretty confident that uh, we can work something out between the two of us, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick up some things also that I need for my collection, like some boxes and manuals. But uh, it's a gray, cloudy, rainy day, and I'm by myself in the van. Katie had to uh, do some work stuff so she couldn't come along on this trip, but uh, I'm going to uh, drive safe and uh, not speed, <laughs> and I'll, I'll get there um, hopefully before it gets dark. And then, uh, you know, when, when I'm there, uh, I'm going to film as much as I can, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't mind being on camera. So let this uh, adventure begin. So I made it two hours, actually like an hour and 50 minutes. This is Matt. Hi, everybody. You might recognize him. Do you remember what episode it was? It was, 30 a, while. It was a while ago. Yeah, yeah, we're talking like seven years ago, uh, probably like in the first 30 episodes right around there. Uh, him and a friend came down. Who was it? Uh, John goes by... Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman. Um, i got to remember that, you, that, that name now. Um, they were down at the market. I think you guys brought some stuff. I think so. Yeah, and then uh, they had uh, found a copy of Wacky, Racer, Wacky Races on NES for like 10 bucks. At that time, it was still going for like $70 or something like that at another booth. So that was like the highlight of that video. I think the thumbnail was holding up a copy <laughs> of Wacky Races. But anyways, um, here at his place, and he... Has a nice Nintendo-esque game collection. Um, let's go take a real quick look at it. Sorry first for the camera I'm using. Katie wouldn't let me bring uh, her phone with me. <laughs> the nice new camera that I've been using to film recently. But all Nintendo stuff. Switch. Up to Switch. And obviously original NES over there. You're uh, very into the boxes. I like the box NES games. Yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you are you like a silverfish? You like eating cardboard? Is that your thing? <laughs> Those fuckers, they find their way up here. I don't even know how. They do. They absolutely love it. But, uh, yeah, there's there's some really nice things in here. And there's a bunch of stuff over here. He's going for the Amiibo set of exactly the, what, the, the battle screen? Yeah, so I'm going for the full Smash Brothers uh, set of Amiibos so I can recreate the character select screen. <laughs> yeah, so he's getting there. It's almost there. They're, they're piecing it together right now. So I did pick up a few things. Uh... I don't even know how to where to begin. This is literally something I did not think I was leaving here with. I knew he had it, but somehow I'm leaving with a um, not just an NES test station, but its little companion brother here, a SNES test station with the, a test cart in there. So that is um, something I never thought I would have come across anything like that. So lots of good stuff in here. There is. There's some really good things. Uh, look at that, a complete inbox Zelda Game & Watch. I'll go through everything that's in here once I get back home, but I want to give a, a big thank you to Matt. Uh, drive was a long drive, but 100% worth coming down here for sure. So thank you again. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Say bye. Bye, guys. You'll see me in a second. I feel like I want to say what's up, everybody, but you've already been watching this video, so uh, what's up, Katie? What's up, everyone? There you go. And the cat. <laughs> this is Civic. This is the one that, if you watched the last episode, she was the, like the only cat that wasn't around. <laughs> She's our seventeen-year-old like mummy cat. She moves very slow. Yeah. So anyway, she'll be here for probably most of the video because it'll take her an hour to cross <laughs> the couch. Um, so to, to to try to describe what happened, um, I, I didn't know exactly what I was going to be getting uh, going on this trip. Um, if I was going to be bringing home an entire van load of stuff or if I was just going to be bringing home a few items, I didn't know. We had talked on the phone. I knew that he really didn't want to sell the Super Nintendo stuff or Nintendo Switch. 
but uh, the other stuff was pretty much up for grabs, um, but we just didn't, it was like one of those things where we could talk a bunch on the phone, do like a video chat, text message, but I'm like, it would work better if I was there, because then I can actually look at it, touch it, see the condition, we can have a conversation, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, I'll go down, it's only two hours. Better in person. Better in person, for sure. Um, when I got there, uh, we started with like the original Nintendo and as you can see, a lot of his stuff was all complete in box. Most of his stuff was, or at least had the box. And we, I came up with sort of a price for what I could pay for the Nintendo. Obviously, I was going down there to mainly buy stuff for the selling purpose. I, there were a few things I wanted for my collection, but most of this stuff was going to be up for sale. So I could only pay a certain amount because then I had to take the time over the next two to three years to sell it. So we came up with a price on that. He was kind of like... 50-50 on it, but we moved on. We went and did GameCube, 3DS, Wii U, and a pile of sort of like random randomness. And we had gotten up to, we're getting into the, you know, the thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, but in the end, it was sort of like, it wasn't just like the money, like I wasn't offering enough or something. It, it was a realization between the two of us that uh, he didn't really, really want to get rid of it. Like he, he was sort of just like, Wanted to some sentimental value. Yeah, he wanted to start the process of maybe starting to get rid of some stuff, but when it came down to that second of, oh my god, it actually might be leaving my house, all of it, he was, you know, a little bit... Get back. Yeah. Baby steps. <laughs> yeah, let's Take go... back a little. <laughs> let's go back a bit. Um, so there was, and again, like, me and him are friends. Him and I are friends. And uh, there was nothing uh, negative between the two of us. We sat there for like two hours and just talked, and we talked about pricing and how I sell stuff, and and what he valued it at and those kind of things and we just had a discussion and then we realized you know what i just don't think it's, it's going to work out in the whole sense and then even if i had told him look i'll give you thirty thousand dollars he'd have probably still been like you know what i think i just want to hold on to it now so at, when we got to that point he was like but there are things here that i don't mind selling um a couple yeah, of treasures I, I just i saw contra's reflection <laughs> up there and it freaked me out for a second so, yeah. Um, so there was a few things that he was like, you know what, I, I mainly just care about the, the boxed stuff. He goes, any of the loose carts I really have, especially for Nintendo, I don't care. Um, and they just happen to be some of his better Nintendo games that he had. So was when he pulled these off the shelf, I was like, all right, well, now we're getting somewhere. This is a good start to at least getting some things. So are you having fun there? Yeah. I'm just loving that. So we have uh, Gargoyles Quest Dose. A lot of doses are in here. So you can, you know, there you go. Uh, you can't even reach now with the cat. I'll just do it. You're just here for the cat and the, <laughs> the smiles and the giggles. <laughs> DuckTales Dose. And these were all in really good condition, too. All the loose yeah. cards he had. Uh, original Contra. Uh, Battletoads and Double Dragon. A Ghost Lion. And Bomberman Dose. Now, I will tell you at the end, um, well, I guess I'm going to say right now, I spent like two Gs. So I spent some money while I was there. You obviously got a sneak peek of, of what the main thing I got, which we'll go over that, you know, in a minute. Um, but I spent a good amount of money still, but it was a hell of a deal. And I got to thank him very much for the way it worked out, which I'm, I'm describing. Like this first bundle, he said, you know what, how about... I don't remember the exact amount, but it was less than 50% of the value. And I was like, yeah, absolutely, man. And he even, I, I was like, well, this one game is like 150. This one game's like 100. He got, and he came up with the price. So he was very, very uh, uh, generous in that sense. Then there were, now, at the beginning, I had told him there was some boxes of manuals I really wanted. I feel like you're not talking. Well, you have a story to tell. I know. But I'm just loving on the kitties. Would you like to say anything about the kitties? <laughs> about <laughs> how are you feeling right now? Feeling good. We're, we're yeah. filming on Katie's phone. Hopefully, it doesn't yeah. screw up like last time. So, so uh, it looks a little different from the last video. That's why. Yes, it <laughs> should be a little bit better quality. Uh, then I had said, you know, there were some box and manuals I wanted, but once like the whole buying everything kind of fell through, he's like. What were the ones that you really needed the box of manuals for? So I pointed them out. They were uh, Last Action Hero. We had Ikari 3 The Rescue. Mule, which has such a cool cover. That uh, cover art's awesome, but the game is, is not so awesome. It's four players, though. 
Um, and then Shockwave. Oh, weird. There was no point in taking the carts out because obviously he just got rid of the few carts, cart only as he had. So he's like, just take the carts too. Uh, Shockwave actually ended up needing the cart for. I couldn't remember if I had it or not, so I needed the cart for that one. Uh, then we moved on from there down to uh, N64. A few more good cartridges. Some uh, more doses? Just one dose. <laughs> Snowboard Kids 2. So many good two games out yeah, there. Two. Put out by Atlas. There are no uh, snow in that. There's no snow in there? There's like a little mountain in the there's, corner. Yeah, there's one little mountain and there's like a patch at the bottom. I don't but... think there's snowboarding. No, it's it's much more ad, yeah advertising giant nosed kids with wings and random things there. They have wings. That one right there. There's right. something. Oh, on the, snowboard. on the snowboard, on the back of the snowboard, on the back of the snowboard. That's why he's flying. Uh, yeah, <laughs> conquers bad fur day, and a ogre battle sixty four, and then the the one stack of stuff that really stood out in his collection because it did not fit in with anything else all this Nintendo stuff yeah yeah all the Nintendo and he had this one little like Sega and PS one game sitting there uh, Final Fantasy seven which this is the uh, misprint masterpiece version I'm not gonna try to show you but on the back where it says masterpiece there's an eye that is floating like out of place yeah it's not even like above where it's supposed to be no and when the game originally like came out and like the probably the following five, eight years after, whatever, um, people would seek this version out, and there was another misprint where, what was it? Uh, Sephiroth was, like, on each side, yeah. instead of the front, you being the airship. The inside cover art was, uh, yeah, just show them, don't, careful, there's a loose disc in there, um, where Aerith, or Ares is in there, the other misprint is another Sephiroth with the fire in the background, which she'll get to the other side and show you that picture also. Um, but people don't really seek out the versions as much anymore. I've never had anyone come. Do you have the masterpiece misprint? It's not really a Looks thing. Like that yeah. Over here. That image was double. I've had that one one time before also. So anyways. I remember it. Uh, then he had the Fantasy Star collection from one to four. All complete. All really nice shape. Uh, we have Master System Original. Dose. They all had their like map slash poster and like mail away inserts in there too. Uh, part three. The and mail away. The mail away. And fan Fantasy Star 4. Yeah, no one mails away for anything anymore. Come on, people. I should I should uh, bring back the mail away. also kind of funny. Than being but those, a... those didn't come from him. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that's why I'm not showing those yet. I thought you was just wrong. I'm going to bring back the mail away, Katie. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have uh, people from my videos. At the bottom of the video... If you just clip out the, <laughs> print it out, print, out, print out, clip so out the bottom, mail it in, and I will send me. you a free yes. NES game. You should do it. Yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones. So anyways, with the N64 stuff kind of out of order here, there was one more. Uh, I just needed the manual for this, but he just said, screw it, I don't want to piece it out. Um, we have Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. So now I have that one complete in the books. There you go. You can pretend to touch it. Uh, he let me get two Super Nintendo games um, because, again, I need the box and manuals for them. We have Death and Return of Superman and Aerobiz. What do you think this game's about? Aeronautic business. He's in an, an office. He's yeah. He's, is that the point of the game? Is to sit in an office? Yeah, just like all um, CEOs of like airports or you know airline companies, you sit right next to where the airplane flies by, so you can you know check and wave and manage your employees. <laughs> Uh, they actually did, you know. As CEO, you call the shots. There was a. Look at the size of his phone. A sequel. Well, yeah, this is like the I know. 90s. Um, the Aerobiz Aer Supersonic was the second game that came out, also. Anyway. Oh, man. Uh, then the last Exciting. two items in this order was uh, two handheld systems, a version I didn't have in the box, the Donkey Kong Land mm -hmm. 2 exclusive to Walmart edition. Game Boy Pocket, a black one, and then a little bit sun faded but pristine condition. Uh, Zelda Game and Watch Ooh. in the box. Uh, that one. This was technically the item that I paid like the most for in the sense of what its value is because he had bought this. He said a few years ago or whatever for like the full price, and I'm like I'm kind of getting into the Game and Watch thing. I have a good amount, but they're so hard to find, especially in the box. 
Um, that I basically just paid him what he paid for it. So that's that a good was one. yeah, that, that's Worth it. nice item. Game and watch stuff, just in the sense of value. If you want to go that route, it's it's not like they're, they're, it's going to go down or it'd be easier to find, and people aren't going to make fake reproduction carts like they do with N64 stuff now or everything else. Yeah. So that was the stack of things that I had. I thought I was leaving his house there, you know, with with those items, and then he kept pointing to the NES test station. And I was like, that was the number one thing that I was not expecting to leave with because I knew how rare it was and expensive. And I was mainly just going to buy his games. And we had, we talked about it throughout the couple hours I was there, just talking, not about buying it and the value of it and where he got it and the person he got it from and all the, the different details. And then at the end, he's like, would you do this price for it? And I was like, dude, I mean, that's a great price, but I think you should, Maybe you should just sell it to somebody. Like, I mean, I, I would love to have it. It's something that would be cool if I just kind of came across, you know, or whatever. But it's like, it's a large item. And I just, I don't usually collect those type of, of things. And, uh... If you saw the game room video, you can see it's pretty packed in there. <laughs> yes. Go watch the game room video. Watch that video. It's like five videos in the past on this channel. Anyways, um... But we just kept talking about it, and he kept kind of chipping away at the price. And I, it got to the point where, like I said, I paid I paid two thousand for everything here, including that. And that kind of thing doesn't have a price, but if you ca uh, uh, account for all these items and that, I mean, that's I, I paid almost nothing for it. So I couldn't say no. And I again, thank you very much. It's something that I'll never come across ever again. Um, here's a, a now a little segment of what it looks like on and doing stuff. So here you go. I think I'm in it. You're, uh, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, okay. So anyways, here you go. While uh, Katie and the cats play Final Fantasy over there, we're going to check out the test station. Um, the image quality on the screen could be better, but I'm assuming that the coaxial that's plugged into it has probably been there for 30 years, and this is the best I can get the screen to look. I don't have another coaxial uh, laying around that I can find at the moment. I know that's crazy. But um, also I have the volume turned all the way down on it because when you start turning that knob right there and if things aren't plugged in, it makes a pretty loud buzzing sound if there's nothing in those ports. So basically this is the kind of standby screen that just says test station. It keeps flashing different colors. If you hit uh, the reset button down here, it'll go to whatever the knob is uh, currently lined up with. And that's like the controller test. You can do... Controller, zapper, rob, and power pad test on this screen. So if I hit start, uh, I can select different options for like the controllers, normal controller tests, and it brings up this menu. And if I hit all the different buttons, it'll uh, test them all out and see if they're working. And then if we turn the knob, so there's nothing plugged into that one. There we have like the AV cable test. Fail! It's broken. Nothing for the uh, RF switch, AC adapter test, and then right in the middle would be for the carts. I don't have the SNES test station hooked up yet, uh, but it wires into the NES test station over on the side over there. And you actually have to have the NES test station for this to do anything. Uh, this one is a companion piece and would just be a paperweight otherwise. And uh, it doesn't have as many ports on it, um, but what's funny is this tray is pretty much all hollow throughout the entire thing, except for right here underneath these two front parts. And there's cabling that hooks from these three uh, through the back and hooks into the back of the Super Nintendo. And then it came with a test cartridge, a burn-in test cartridge, controller, super scope, and mouse. And we're back. We're back. Okay. Uh, so... <laughs> That, again, that was um, an unexpected ad, and I am keeping it. It is not for sale. He was like, you're going to keep this, right? And I'm like, yes. I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm just going to go find or buy another one somewhere. And now I kind of want to get more of the test cartridges. Uh. So, you know, to add to add to it. So maybe that'll be a thing over the next, you know, few years that I'll keep a, uh, an eye out for, or at least, you know, attempt to do, like, trades or deals for now. So anyways, thank you all for watching, and... Uh, there will be another video up before Christmas time for sure, at least one more. Um, but we are getting close to me going back out on tour in January. January. So I'm going to try to get up as many more as I can before then. At least one more, if not 
two, maybe three. Who knows? Holidays. Look at that. I told you she didn't move the entire time. Hey, come here. One more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come here. Meow. No, that way. There we go. That's the right direction. Anyways, all right. We love you all. Love you. Talk to you later. Peace. Peace.